it needs to be considered as a liability because the organization contribute to the national state or multi-employer plans so whatever benefits that are due to the employee that has to be paid by the employer in the form of service in the form of work that has to be contributed back in the form of benefits to the employee account it will have to be given back to that particular person it has to be paid Good morning and welcome to the session 2 in unit 4 in IFRS where we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic called as the employee benefits which has been listed under the section Indian Accounting Standards 19. Now let's go further and try to understand what is this all about. The objective of the standard is to prescribe the accounting and the disclosure for employee benefits. Now in many organizations there are hundreds and thousands of employees who are working. So the benefits that are being given by the company towards the employees has to be clearly mentioned, it has to be clearly told. So that is why we are bringing in the standard altogether. The standard requires an entity to recognize the liability when an employee has provided service in exchange for the employee benefits to be paid in future. Now every single work that is being done by an employee towards the organization Every single service that is being rendered by an employee towards the organization has to be considered as a liability. Why? Because the organization in future has to pay him back for his benefits. They have to give him the benefits altogether. So all these things have to be understood in terms of the accounting standards. An expense when entity consumes the economic benefit arising from the service provided by an employee in exchange for employee benefits. Now, for example, if the organization itself consumes those benefits in the name of the employee, then it has to be recognized as an expense factor and not as an income because that was the benefit which has to go through the employee. It has to go for the employee for his services and the organization has taken it by itself. So that case, it is considered to be an expense altogether. So overall, for any kind of services, for any kind of work that is being provided by an employee towards the organization, it needs to be considered as a liability because the organization has to go forward and pay the price for it followed by the scope of the standard. This standard has been applied by the employer in the accounting for all employee benefits except for which in this section of 102 that is in share based payment because that's a different standard altogether and this standard does not deal with employee benefit plans because the share based payment is not coming into that factor. Apart from which the employee benefits to which the standard includes are provided under formal plans or any other formal agreement between the entity and the employee. So let me make it very very clear. Now the moment employee joins an organization there is a formal agreement between the employer and employee stating that for the terms and conditions of working. So for the amount of service or the work that is being done by the employee towards the organization the employer has to pay him certain benefits has to pay him certain value altogether. So this is under a formal structure this is under a formal agreement altogether. So those factors have to be kept in mind in terms of accounting followed by under the legislative requirements or through industry arrangements whereby entities are required to contribute to the national state or multi-employer plans. Now most of us know about the PF, about the DA. T 
PA and other kind of plans, say PPF or towards insurance or towards other factors which have been recognized by the central government as well as the state government, the necessary deductions have to be made on time and they have to be credited to the respective accounts. So the employee, the employee has to get all the benefits as far as possible. The employer cannot hide this amount and put it in some other account and try to cheat the employee. This is very, very important. Why? Because all these arrangements will be monitored under the accounting section by those informal practices that give rise to constructive obligation. Informal practices give rise to constructive obligations where the entity has no realistic alternative other than to pay the employee benefits. Now, for example, a constructive obligation is where there is a change in the informal practices that would cause unacceptable or some damage to the relationship with the employee. So you are very, very clear here in case if there is going to be any kind of practices, any kind of act which is going to lead to an informal practice, to an informal situation altogether, all these things will lead to an unacceptable behavior. This will lead in terms of a rift between the employer and the employee. And that is why it is mandatory for the employer to credit all the benefits and work according to the formal agreement that has been signed on. Moving further, the definition here, employee benefits are all forms of consideration given by the entity in exchange for service rendered by the employees or for the termination of the employee. So in terms when he is working for that you have to give the benefits automatically when that employee resigns from the organization and leaves. So whatever benefits that are due to the employee that has to be paid by the employer at that given moment of time. So that is where the standard applies in terms of accounting. Moving further, in the definition, we also have this factor called as short-term employee benefits, which are also the employee benefits that is expected to be settled completely before 12 months after the end of the annual reporting period in which the employees re render the related service. So within that one year of accounting service, what are the one year of accounting period, whatever the employee has contributed to the organization in the form of service, in the form of work, that has to be contributed back in the form of benefits to the employee account. So you cannot take it or you cannot defer it away for that matter. Whatever that has to be settled within that particular accounting period has to be given back to the employee. Moving further, the post-employment benefits are employee benefits. That is very, very important that we are going to see here that are payable after the completion of the employment. So the post-employee benefits are also very, very important. Why? Because that will tell you what are all the factors that we need to look in in terms of making up this payment in terms of the completion of the employment. So after the completion of the employment, whatever benefits that has to be paid back will have to be given back to that particular person. It has to be paid back. It has to be given at that point of time. With that, we also come to the definitions relating to the classification of plans. So what are all the plans that the particular organization, the entity has towards this? The first thing is that defined contribution plans are post-employment benefits. So PF, once the person has joined the work, the PF will start after he has come into service. So that's what I say post-employment benefit here under which entity pays a fixed to contribution so 12% of your basic shall be deducted and be you know deposited in your pf account and will have no legal or constructive obligation in future for the contribution if the fund does not hold any sufficient assets to pay at all in terms of employee benefits relating to the employee service in the current or in the prior period. So as long as they are able to hold and as long as the employee is in service, this PF contribution will continue. So this is what is very, very important in terms of understanding it. 
followed by let me talk about the net defined benefit liability that is deficit or surplus adjusted to any effect of limiting a net defined asset to the ceiling so there is a ceiling under which this comes into picture the deficit or surplus is always look further the present value of the defined benefit or minus the obligation plus the, you know when you subtract the obligation factor and you start calculating the fair value plan of the asset so that is where we are going to calculate it followed by the asset ceiling that is the present value in any economic benefit plans that are available in the form of refund which is there or reductions in the future contribution so if there is going to be any reduction if there is going to be a, any format in terms of any contributions anything that has been taken place or any refunds that are going to come in all those factors have to be taken into account and they have to be presented in the financial statement saying that what has been the changes what has been the different values altogether now the definitions that are related in terms of the benefit cost first thing is that the service cost will comprise of the current service cost which is an increase in the present value of the defined benefit obligation where is it resulting from from the employee service in the current period so every time when the employee is working for the organization there is a current service cost which is rising up because that's an obligation you are taking service from the employee so you need to pay for it past service cost Suppose he has left the organization in the previous, whatever you have done, the employee has done for that. That present value is defined as a benefit obligation for the employee service in the prior periods, resulting from a plan of amendment. So whatever the services the organization has extracted from the employee in the past, even that has to be accounted and has to be given back to the employee. Any gain or loss on the settlement has to be written in the account. Accounting. Suppose you have gained something from that or you have made a loss by paying up all the benefits that has to be accounted in the book of accounts followed by the short term benefit employee benefit plan as I was talking about includes all the following if expected to be settled wholly between the 12 months as we were talking about and this includes all those factors like wages, social security contribution, annual paid leave, any kind of profit sharing basis or you know when we are talking about medical care, housing, car, free uh, subsidized good or for example any kind of you know immediate benefits that have been given together. So these things have to be recognized immediately by the company and they have to be published in the book of accounts why because these are all certain things where the company has to take it as an expense rather than just taking the money and putting it back into their account so they need to understand every single employee who's contributing for the development of the organization is definitely an expense for the organization moving further the profit sharing and bonus plan the entity shall recognize the expected cost of profit sharing and the bonus payments under paragraph 11 which is already given there and only when the entity has a present legal or constructive obligation to make such payments which is you know these payments are arising from the past events and b it's a reliable estimate an obligation that can be made altogether a present obligation exists when and only the entity has no realistic but has to make the payment so it, it takes into account what are all the factors that has already been contributed that has to be given in in terms of the payment factors with this i come to the end of this session i hope and believe that this session was of a great help and resource to you in the upcoming sessions we will be speaking more about the different kinds of accounting standards that are coming up in the modern world in order to help and make the accounting standards even more ethical and transparent but until then stay tuned stay blessed and stay enlightened forever thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session